set up. Okay, Thanks, man. Bro. What we just do, man? How's uh, how, how you feeling after the workout cold plunge combination at the studio? First off, what do you think about the studio? Dude, the studio is great. This place is is awesome. Um, second time here, so I mean, still relatively new, and it's it's everything that I thought it'd be. Pretty what, fun. What would you add to it? Add to it, yeah, dude. Because we're in Florida. Maybe more kettlebells. <laughs> this guy is the kettlebell king. Um, <laughs> But but yeah, that hundred percent true. We only have uh, four kettlebells, and two of them are pretty light. Um, and I was gonna say though, we're in Florida. Like I think I always want to have a sauna, but like, dude, in the summer, you just step one. outside. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's so bad. But yeah, we're trying to figure out what we're gonna add to it. But it's been great. And so you've been down here for a few weeks, and you're thinking about maybe moving, possibly, possibly. Yeah, yeah. No, my wife and I and, and the kids were down here, and. Uh, here for the whole month so yeah we've we've loved it the best it's yeah. unbelievable so for those listening like colin and i are basically brothers like you me josh um at the studio or at the beach or whatever we've already ha- hung out like three or four different times elsewhere and i'm like i told my wife this i'm like dude colin is literally like my brother like we, i feel like we're on the same page with everything which is why i'm stoked we're having a conversation because yeah. between family faith fitness we're both entrepreneurs like you know, you look better in Roan shirts than me, but that's, you know, we're going to let that pass. But seriously, we have so much um, alignment there. So anyway, how did you get to, uh, to, to, for people who don't know you, like how did you go from this, you know, gifted kid, you were, you were going to get into engineering and then you got into fitness, right? So <laughs> please, please bridge the Basically gap right that. there. Basically, yeah, yeah. No, first off, thanks, man. And dude, it's been awesome. You guys have been super hospitable. My wife and I, we, we live in Oklahoma right now, and yeah. you guys have literally made this feel like home. So love uh, just everyone here is awesome. Yeah, love the Florida people already. I feel like we already got a lot of family out here. Which is Your great. Instagram handle is Flow Life. Yeah. That, that's literally yeah. like, that's meant to be. You're meant to be head, uh, headquartered here. Dude, but. I'm, I'm telling you. But no, yeah, to, uh, to answer your question, I, uh, I grew up my whole life, like my father was in medicine, I wanted to go to med school. And so not engineering, but it basically was that, right? Like went to, you know, undergrad, did biochemistry in college. And biochemistry, that's what yeah, I was thinking. It was basically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> close enough. That shows you, like close that shows enough. you my <laughs> level of understanding that. <laughs> yeah, engineer. Yeah, he's going to be an engineer. No, dude. No, it's it was it was basically like that, though. Like definitely something I was, uh, you know, I, I appreciate it. Like it taught me a lot of, of good disciplines and stuff. But when I got out of school, took a year off, you know, was going to apply to med school and decided uh, that was not the path I wanted to go after. Mm-hmm. Just working in the hospital system for a year, um, you know, and, and basically, you know, pivoted, changed paths. And then uh, was that a hard decision? Oh, yeah. 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 So a lot of like uh, reflection and yeah, yeah, intention. Well, yeah, I mean, dude, I think I made that decision. You know, you don't. I feel like you don't just wake up and you're like, I want to go to med school, right? right? Like it takes years of thinking about that before you make that commitment, mm-hmm. and it starts early in high school, right? Like you got to make good grades to go to a good college to you know, then hopefully get accepted to med school. So it's like, I, I think it was like eighth, ninth grade. I was like, I'm going to go become a doctor, you know? Hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, it was like this, you know, eight, nine, 10 year process of uh, be trying to become this thing. And then, hmm. then having to deconstruct that and go, okay, wait, what do I want to do now? Hmm. And that's when I kind of pivoted and, and applied to physical therapy school. Yeah, Went to PT school, loved it. Yeah. Graduated almost a year ago to the day. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. And, and been out for a year now. And uh, congrats on that. Yeah. I appreciate that. But I got into fitness during PT school. Mm-hmm. I started working. And you had ran track, though, in high oh, yeah. school, college. For sure. Yeah. So you were an yeah. athlete from the. Yeah. Young no, age. for sure. I always wanted to do like sports medicine. And so, man, while I was in, like, I think it was the month before I started physical therapy school, I got a job as a, as a, fit, like, a fitness coach. Yeah. Like literally, at a, at that's a gym or? at a local gym. Yeah, cool. It's Solid Rock Training. Shout out to yeah. Solid Rock Training in, in Norman, Oklahoma. Let's go, Solid Rock, dude. Hey, Great awesome! Name. It literally, yeah, Christian people Let's love go. the Lord. They're dude, they're the best, salt of the earth, and taught yeah. me everything. Like so much of the the knowledge that helped me like become a fitness coach and mm. also grow my business. Mm. And so Derek and Bob were the two founders and uh, took me under their wing. And but yeah, in the process mm. of coaching there and going to school at the same time, pulling a lot of late nights at the gym. Right, like coaching clients and stuff, and mm-hmm. and then COVID hit. Right, twenty twenty. We all remember that March of twenty twenty, April of twenty twenty. 
found out my wife was pregnant and go, wow. oh, oh, dang. Wow. I need to I need to find another way to make money that's Man. not going to keep me at, at the gym till 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. at night. Mm-hmm. So I uh, started building out the website that day for huh. Flow Life. Yeah. Crazy. crazy. And your website's so clean, by yeah. the way. I, I told you about that off uh, in a conversation. <laughs> I'm like, dude, this, this guy's back end stuff and his website, which we appreciate. I mean, yeah. myself and, and Josh specifically just being like creators that – you know, want to make things aesthetic and all that. So yeah, heck yeah. Was it hard for you? I have a couple of questions in, in regards to what you just said. Was it hard for you to make that change? Like, did you feel the shift from, okay, I've been trying to be someone or follow a path because this is kind of what my parents would expect, but I feel like a tug in a different direction. Was that hard for you? Absolutely. So what was the biggest, uh, what, what helped you make that change and just stick to it and be like, this is what I want? Dude, man, I, I, I think at the time I was trying to also really look at like, what, what are like the gifts and the things that like, I'm like, I'm, I'm naturally good Mm. at not like trying to push myself into a box of like, you know, something that I've dreamt up of myself becoming or Mm. like, you know, someone else, like my parents or like the, even my coaches and my teachers growing up, like they all knew what, what I wanted to do. Right. So they all talked to me about it. Like I, when I decided to, t- you know, take that turn away from that career path, mm-hmm. I was now, you know, kind of looking at all those people going like, you know, I felt like I was failing, mm. right? Like I was kind of like, hey, I failed at uh, uh, basically going after this thing that you guys thought I was going to become. Right. And now I have to shift, you know, my entire, uh, you know, life around really mm. to like to approach life differently and look at life differently and utilize honestly like the things that I feel like I'm naturally good at and that didn't come easy like I think that I was you know for the longest time just had my head down I was working Mm -hmm. trying to make good grades you know things like that all noble noble things and good things and like I said earlier learned a lot of good disciplines from Mm -hmm. it right and Mm -hmm. uh but I think when I really stepped back and looked it's like dude I love people I love working with people I love fitness and health and becoming you know using that as a vehicle for becoming a healthier version of, um, you know, whoever you are. Yeah. And I had experienced it as an athlete. And then when I got out of college and no longer had my identity as an athlete, I then had to kind of shift and Hmm. go, how am I going to stay fit? Like I'm married, right? I want to be fit for my wife, look good for my wife, all that stuff. And then when we got pregnant with our first child, like I was like, dude, I'm going to have this, you know, daughter or son Mm -hmm. looking up to me as an example now. So it's like, each stage of life give you these these new like bridges that you have to cross where mm-hmm. you achieve and find new meaning in what you're doing and health and fitness like is honestly like the centerpiece mm-hmm. along with my faith of like so many of those transitions yeah. i've had to learn how to integrate it in every single season of life that i've had whether it's been a busy season or a calm season yep. and every single time it's 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 the bedrock dude mm-hmm. it's it's the foundation for um for who I become when I wake up in the morning every day. Yeah. So that fires me up, bro. I mean, it really, like, I love that idea of health being the first true wealth. Like, when you're not healthy, everything becomes secondary, truly. Like, if, like, I had a conversation with Josh's wife yesterday, like, mental health, when you're not mentally, like, taking care of yourself, like, really, the number one priority is just trying to get mentally right. And so I think health and, and especially fitness is in, the, in a very, the very same category. You have to take care of your health. And so I love that, dude. So you got two beautiful children, beautiful wife, amazing people. Like, I, I don't know them as well as I know you, obviously, because uh, I haven't been around them longer. But um, what's that been like to, I guess, try to balance all that? Like, how do you, I guess, how do you balance the work and the family with your uh, with your own personal life? Because I'm a new dad, too. And I sense that. It's like, this is a season of things don't look exactly the way they used to. But I know from experience, like if I'm not showing up for myself discipline wise and doing the same things I coach clients with, yeah. I'm not going to be happy or successful. So, um, you know, like, I guess how that, how, how's that been for you? What's the key to your balance? <laughs> like if this is right, yes. that's kind of a loaded question. Yeah, no, no, no. I love it. Man. But if this is, if, if this one thing is right, then like everything else kind of flows from that maybe. Dude, make time for yourself. Um, my father and my my mom, honestly, both of them, uh, and honest, I I feel lucky like to say this, that dude, they've always taken care of themselves. Mm -hmm. So early, like as far as I can remember, they beat us out of bed, 
right? So my my dad was like a four a.m. guy, right? Yeah. Up, yeah. Had you know gone that Mark, for a that run. Mark Wahlberg, <laughs> yeah, dude. Level. My dad, he's he is literally a quiet version of Mark Wahlberg. Mm. Like he's he, and dude, he's been that way since I was born. Like. Wow. As far as, you know, I, I've ever, you know, had memories of that man. Like, he's always done that. So I had him, and then my mom was not too far behind him, 5, 30, 6 a.m. Wow. She was hitting the pavement, going for a run. So wow. I had these two human beings doing this from a young age, and I, I started to connect the dots, like, around, like, ninth, 10th grade in high school of, like, oh, they wake up early to make time for themselves. Wow. They're not waking up to that alarm and, Something uh, just flew in the room. <laughs> I'm not sure if we lost the camera or what happened, but that was Drew's, good. <laughs> Drew's over there, probably. Probably. Um, no, but they they made that margin for themselves and, mm. and created that time for themselves. And um, so I picked that up from them at a young age. And over the course of of the last you know 15 years, have essentially done the same thing. But so you know, just started setting my alarm 20 minutes earlier, mm-hmm. 30 minutes earlier, mm-hmm. 40 minutes earlier. Yeah. And now it's like I'm up hours, three hours before my my wife and kid get get up. You I know? love that. And my wife does the same thing, right? Like she tries to beat the kids out of bed as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just it's one of those things, particularly as a busy young dad, husband, entrepreneur, business owner coach yeah. you know like all these things you, you have all these hats you're gonna wear during the day right dude get up in the morning spend time on yourself mm-hmm. because you know when you put all those hats on throughout the rest of the day like you're gonna be the, the best version of yourself if you start prioritizing your faith mm. and your health in the morning like right when you get out of bed and yeah. that's so yeah i wake up really really early to answer your question i freaking love that so yeah. what's the typical morning time Dude, four to four thirty. I love that. Dude. Yeah, yeah. I um, try and get like six hours in. What night. about Florida? Like now? Yeah. You still waking up in Florida on vacation? Ah, Florida's been. Yeah. I've been getting up like five. Florida's five. been a little bit more fluid. <laughs> a little more laid back. Yeah. So yeah, I've been more like five, five thirty this, this trip. But now, I think, did you do that when you first had your like your first child? Did you still do that? When I when we had like my my son, right? Like yeah, like I was steel. I was more like five okay. five a.m. Yeah. And then when we had my daughter, I went through this string of like being stressed right when she was first born because I was trying to build my business. I was trying to grow the brand. I was trying to do all these things. But I was waking up like 5.30, right? Because we have a newborn. Uh She's waking up throughout the night. You're you're just not sleeping. But I hit it. I hit hit this point like two months in. I was like, I am not getting the time I need to execute on the things I need to, right? And I'm talking about even like for myself, like getting up, drinking water, right? you know, uh, diving into the word, yeah. spending some quiet time journaling. Mm-hmm. Like those are the big Planning. three things I do right when I get up in the morning. And so it's like, even those things, like hitting those right when I get up and it's, it's dude, it's like do or die for me. Essential. And so when my daughter was like two months old, I was like, I'm getting up at four fifteen, and it, my alarm stayed that way. I, I slept until six on Sundays Yeah. every day, every other day is four fifteen. I freaking love that by the way. <laughs> I'm, seriously, you've yeah. inspired me to to get back yeah. to that. My daughter is almost three, and I remember vividly. I mean, she, so she was a NICU baby. Were, were any of your babies early? Yeah, both of them were uh, two and a half to three weeks early. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't um, didn't have. I mean, didn't have to do the NICU, but yeah, yeah. yeah. But the NICU, just that process was unique because there was pros to it. Like there was pros and cons. It taught us um, in a lot of ways how to be parents to a child and like learn the routines. I'm actually amazed that. People have kids and they go home like the day after. Or if you're doing home births, more power to you because you're just <laughs> there in it. Yeah. But like, it's actually incredible how they're just like, well, good luck. Yeah. And see ya yeah, out the door. Yeah. So we actually got to learn. But the cons was, you know, we're back and forth. We were at the hospital for, for four days with Gigi. She got discharged. And so we're back home and we're going back and forth, back and forth, spending every waking hour at the NICU. And they're like, but please go mm-hmm. home and at least missed at least miss a feeding so you can get some sleep because that's the best thing for you. Yeah. What I noticed was though, Colin, was I'll be I'll be in the NICU family center and I'm like snacking and it's 2 oh, a.m. Yeah. I'll be snacking when I get oh, home. Yeah. It's 4 a.m., 6 oh, a.m. Yeah. So that's, I feel like, for guys, especially if there's dudes listening, yes. new dads or, or dads uh, coming, ta- dads to be, that's one of the things that I noticed. I'm like, oh, this is what happens. Yeah. Guys will use this as an yeah. escape because I'm like, I'm stressed out. I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm prayed up. I'm doing, I'm, I'm really talking to God and I'm doing all that, but it's 2 a.m. and I, yeah. I just crushed a sleeve of Oreos. I just crushed it, you know, like, like an yes, absolute dude. animal. Yeah. But that went on for weeks and yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm not sleeping well. I'm eating and snacking very yeah. unlike me. And ding, 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 go figure. I don't feel like me. 
Yeah. Yeah. So get back to what the, the process and the habits and decisions yeah. and rituals that made you you. Yeah. Right? 100%. So I think that's that huge. that's huge. And I think if you're a dad listening, that's big. Don't fall into the trap of like, this is just the lifestyle you have to take on now. Because clearly you woke up at four. You just said, all right, F it. I'm going to wake up at 4.15 yeah. because I need to get my stuff in. Yeah. And that's fire. Right. 100%. You said something too, which fired me up and and uh, got me uh, super pumped because you're you're aware at 29, you know, 28, 29 years old, of how much your kids watch you mm. and how much that's going to make an impact. Because that you they'll they'll hear you, but like, dude, if you are living in a way that's not aligned with that, like, they're not gonna they're gonna say dad's full of crap. Yeah. So yeah. how important is that to you? Is that a big factor in like why you show up is you want them to see you in the word or waking up early or, you know, stuff like that. 100%. Yeah. No. And I mean, dude, actions, I mean, this is so cliche. Actions speak louder than words, dude. Like, and I, I think we've learned that too. Like our, our son's getting to be about two and a half years old. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's like, obviously at that age where behavior is becoming a thing that we're having to like work on. Right. Yeah. Like he's, you know, He's the classic two and a half year old. Like he's you, has meltdowns, two years old. <laughs> dude. Yeah, like he's me at two years, which I was a savage. So he is savage, too, in probably not the best way sometimes. But yeah. No, man. Like, dude, he's he's so fun. But I I look at him every day. The dude knows what working out is. He's like, Daddy, work out. Like he knows what that means. And then he starts like doing his rendition of a mm -hmm. squat. Mm -hmm. And I've got like a little one kilogram kettlebell at home. Yes. And he'll go grab his kettlebell. So like. It's getting imprinted on him, that term imprinting. Like, mm. it's getting imprinted in the way his mind processes everything around him. Of, oh, like, my mother and my father are, are making time for themselves. My wife, like, she goes to a, a local gym, uh, yeah. Burn, and yeah. she, she takes him with her. So he knows, like, when they go, he gets to play, but he also sees her out the window working out. Amazing. So the dude watches his mother and father do that, and I know my daughter's going to be the same way. Yeah. And so I, I – dude, it's – it obviously, like, I was motivated before I had kids, and, dude, like, we're so blessed that we even had two. Mm -hmm. We're so grateful, and, like, dude, they're healthy, and we're just – we couldn't be more more grateful for that. Yeah, praise God. But now, yeah, it's like now we, we have, you know, been tasked and given this, like – uh, this role to Ooh. be leaders for them Ooh. and to be intentional, you know, be intentional with our time, being intentional with our words and wow. obviously with our bodies. And mm -hmm. I think those are like massive things that parents, you know, and, and dude, parenthood's stressful. Like everyone's got different stressors. If you look at someone's plate, I can guarantee you everyone's plate's going to look different. Everyone's plate's full. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. everyone's plate's full. Yep. Your plate's full. My plate's full. Just you got looks... stuff hanging off the edge. It's actually, it's, it's yes. more than full. <laughs> I've got some bacon hanging off the edge. Bro. No. <laughs> it's dripping. Got mashed potatoes yeah. falling off. Yeah. <laughs> some steaks. But 100%. no, dude, I, it's just, you look at that and, and that analogy really applies to everybody. So yeah. it's like when I talk to, especially like young men who are, you know, maybe they're about to enter into the season of marriage, yeah. right? Or, or parenthood or a new job. It's like every transition you go through has these new challenges that are going to present themselves. Mm. And it's going to, you know, it's going to demand more of your time, mm. right? So now you have to then turn around and figure out, okay, how do I, how do I become more efficient? Yes. How do I become more intentional mm. with the minutes that I have in the day? Like, dude, my quiet times in the morning, they used to be like an hour long, bro. Yeah. Now they're like eight minutes. Yep. Now they're, they're like great. three breaths. You're like, okay, <laughs> I, that's all I got today. But I, you know, praise God. It's yeah. like, we're good. Let's yeah. roll, baby. You yeah. know, so it's like, you just, you, you got to be more efficient, more effective. And, and at the end of the day, like that, that's setting the example for your kids yeah, and the bro. people around you. So good. There's yeah. so many things. And my memory is I'm trying to like encapsulate stuff you said and kind of lock it away so we can expand on some stuff. Um, but uh, what you were saying about how the, the stakes are higher, bro. When you're single and when you're, it's just you, it's really like you take full advantage. Obviously we can always look retrospectively and wish we did things differently. But when you become, when you get married and when you become a father or a parent, you understand like, wow, I had a lot of time. I had a lot of free time and I wish I had that back. And so now it doesn't become, a, it doesn't become like run away from, from your responsibilities. Yeah. It becomes maximizing on the time you have. And, and I love that Josh and I will talk about it. It's not about conserving or protecting your energy as much as it is utilize the energy you do have, even if it's a little bit, and put it into things that give you more of it. Mm. So if you have a 10% threshold of energy right now and it could be 100, 
The goal is not to conserve that. Dude, what yeah. are you conserving? You don't have any energy. The goal is to put that 10% into stuff that actually gives you 5X, 10X. Yes. And yeah. so that's what Preach. physical and spiritual fitness will do for us, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I freaking love that. Now, how would you, yeah, like I guess um, the other question too, because, you know, I geek out about spiritual fitness. You're a Christian. Yes. Um, you know, doing life with God is is a, a million times better than trying to do it alone. Um and I, I think this is a cool idea because I, I think there's a lot of guilt out there in religion generally, yeah. right? I think there's yeah. a big uh, guilt factor that plays a role in people just avoiding um, spiritual things mm. or, or God and, and stuff like that. Um, and what I found, and, and maybe it's the same for you or different, but what I found was I loved, I loved, and I wish I can go back there, those mornings when I could wake up and pray and then spend an hour in the Word mm. and reflect and maybe yeah. write down, go outside yeah. and listen to the birds and like just just be there and be present. That's beautiful. Yeah. Sometimes we need to do that and you should, yeah. you know, uh, plan that in. But oftentimes um, now, well, not oftentimes, but I found myself realizing that when I wasn't able to do that with a puppy and then with a baby, <laughs> yeah. I was like, you dove right in, dude. Yeah, it, we went <laughs> zero to a hundred, puppy then baby. Uh, people call bold, us crazy, and we are bold move, bro. See how it plays out, Cotton. Yeah. Was that was that line? Bold, bold strategy, Cotton. Let's bold, see how it plays bold out. Bold move, Cotton. <laughs> yes, um, but I found myself, in, and I'm, I'll get to the point. I'm landing the plane now. Is I realized, you know, I, I was. Did I really miss the time with God, or did I miss the time yeah. with my habit? Yeah. With with time with God. Yeah. So yeah. It, there's a distinction because what I've discovered in the past two years after yeah. having like this 2020, I really did feel like God just w opened my eyes to a lot of stuff is I feel like God would rather converse with us throughout our day than yeah. just to spend that hour with him in the morning and then forget about him the rest of the day. No? Absolutely. So yeah. like I really was in a point where – um let me try to find time to connect with God and bring him in the rest of my life as opposed mm -hmm. to having an hour with him up front because now I don't have that. I don't have that luxury. Yeah. So I guess speak to that maybe, the importance mm -hmm. of, look, if you, do, if you can't maybe spend an hour, maybe mm -hmm. you don't need an hour. Maybe it's more about inviting him in throughout your day and like maybe taking a second to just say a quick prayer. And like, I'm not sure. That's yeah. kind of what I've no, yeah. realized. Yeah, no, I, I mean, and what you're, I think what you're also like touching on too is like your thought life. It's like, when you're just walking through your day, you know, and you're just reactive, you know, you're just like seeing things like, bro, I'll confess this right here. Confession I've got, time. I've got bad, bad road rage. <laughs> like, like I become another human being. That's my, the military. My, and you. Dude, my wife's like, what is going on? <laughs> uh, dude, like, so, but, you know, if I'm fixated on how slow this human being in front of me is driving. By the way, we're good here. We're going to yeah. keep going. So yeah, you're good. Um, if I'm fixated on like what that person in front of me is doing, right? Like driving slow, whatever, like I'm, I'm going to be in a negative mindset yep. the rest of the day, yep. you know, versus if I'm like on the front end and proactive about the, the way that I'm thinking, you know, praying mm -hmm. and having a conversation with the Lord all day. Yeah. Um, I mean, 10 out of 10, you know, it's always, I feel like I always find more gratitude I always find more time to stop and, I mean, stop and smell the roses, right? Like, look up, like, look at the sky, mm -hmm. like, notice the, the green trees, mm -hmm. right? Tell my wife how beautiful she looks. Like, there's all these things that I feel like you, you, your perspective on the day just opens. You see people, more people, and, like, you see people's needs. And, mm -hmm. like, so I think that when you when you carry out your day like that, you don't have to have this, like, hour long, you know, meditation in the morning yeah. to be able to do that. You mm -hmm. know, like I, like I said earlier, it's like, dude, my quiet times are like eight minutes now. It's like really short, right. but I, I love those times. They're special. They're sacred to me. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the day, it's like, I just try to talk to God all day. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, like, thank you, God, for giving me this parking spot yes, yeah. at the front of Publix, right? right? It's a big deal. <laughs> so That's some of the biggest things. It's like little things like that. I'm just kidding. Park at the back of the parking lot and walk more steps, baby. Boom. <laughs> That's my freaking guy, dude. <laughs> no, but it's just little things like that. Find that gratitude in the small stuff. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy those moments with, like, your the people around you, whether it's your coworkers, your your spouse, your kids. That's that's where the the true uh, wealth is, I think. Bro, you know, that's so fire. The day. So what in um, such a great point? What what's what was the like? I guess shift in your mindset that enables you to do this? Because I feel like mm. that is hard for. I can think back to where 
God and my spiritual life was very compartmentalized, and mm-hmm. that's the religion. It's like, yeah, 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 I, yeah, I go to church on yeah. Sunday for an hour, and then I don't think about God the rest of my week. Yeah. And if you're telling me that gives you life, then, like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. the way mm-hmm. I've experienced um, more fulfillment and more joy and more passion in my life has been truly asking God to like reveal himself more to me and then experiencing, like you said, beautifully, experiencing him when you find that parking spot or when you you notice something, you're like, man, that's beautiful. Like, thank you, God. Yeah. And I joke, yeah. like, man, thank you, God. <laughs> like, it's beautiful just to have that conversation. So for you, was that a shift that happened yeah. instantly? Was it dra- gradually? Yeah. No, yeah. I, I feel like I was, you know, like growing up in the church, because I did, and I, I'm grateful for it, bro. Like, it... Uh, honestly so thankful but when you when you enter into adulthood mm. it's not like you have to do this like whole process oh I need to find myself right like but I do think that there is a process of separating your child from yourself right like who you were as a kid and becoming an adult yeah. and, and especially as a man it's like you know taking that boy and like you know saying like all right like I'm I'm done yeah. with you right like I'm stepping into manhood and I mm. think like with me when I was going through that process, part of that spiritually was separating this idea that, you know, the only time I could be close to God was inside this building called mm-hmm. the church, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. or when I'm hanging out with my church friends, it's like, no, like, yeah. dude, I, I found uh, that like probably, you know, early to mid twenties, you know, where it was like, I realized the church was not a building. It was, you know, the people that you surround yourself with and, you know, how you're spending your time throughout your day, mm, right? It's like good. it's it's the seven days a week, you know, 24 hours a day thing that mm-hmm. you can live out and it doesn't need to be this like hour and a half of you putting on a face every Sunday, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I, you know, I, I'm not bashing Christians, I'm not bashing religion, but it's like, dude, that's not Christianity. Christianity is having a, a relationship mm-hmm with Jesus, mm-hmm. right? And like a relationship, I don't know about you, but communication is pretty important, right? That's so a big one, huh? Yeah. Uh, dude, my, I tell my, ask my wife, right? Like, <laughs> I, I'm still working on that. Yes. But uh, yeah, it's it's one of those, I think it's one of those areas of my life that I think early, you know, mid, mid-20s, I just kind of had, had to realize like, okay, that's not where I can be close to God. Like mm-hmm. I can do it all day long. Yeah. And, um, and I think I did that through, like I used to, I used to fast one day a week for like 24 hours. That was that was good. Like I think it was like a good season. I did it for like a year straight wow. before I got married to my wife, and mm-hmm. uh, like it was a cool time because I think it taught me obviously like the whole discipline of fasting, right? The health benefits and all that stuff. But it also taught me like what it looks like to have a conversation with God all day. Because mm-hmm. every time you think about food or, mm-hmm. or whatever, it's like, hey, just talk, just That's talk with him, right? And so, so it's like it, it's this habitual thing. It's like, you know, someone first starts working out. Just go to the gym for like 10 minutes. 100%. Just show up. Mm. Just show up. Don't even like, hey, just go hop on the elliptical 10 minutes and leave. Boom. Right? You do that for, you know, 30 days, 60 days in a row, uh, you know, five, six days a week. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon your workouts are 20 minutes long, 30 minutes long, 40 minutes long, right? And then you're almost having to plan recovery days because you're going too hard. That's right. right. So it's like you you go through this process of just taking little bites and then you eventually grow that into, you know, what what is hopefully a a life giving habit. Right. Freaking love that. And both spiritual and physical examples of that is key word you just ended, life giving. Yeah. Like the gym shouldn't be like this like punishment. You know what I'm saying? Just in the same way that fasting, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. and, and prayer and study and all this stuff, like it shouldn't be punishment. Like you shouldn't do it because you feel like you need to punish yourself. No. Yeah. Um, you, you actually find there's there's life on the other side of discipline, right? Yep. There's freedom on the other side of discipline. It's huge. Um, and so are, have you ever read the book, anything like the celebration of discipline by Richard Foster or have you ever heard of Dallas mm. Willard? I've um, heard of them. Spirit. I've never read those books. Yeah. I've read Discipline Equals Freedom. Oh, Jocko? Jocko. Yeah, Jocko's the man. Legend. Yes. Well, he's, I was going to say, he's like very probably similar in the, you know, just with how you were raised, I yeah. feel like his yeah. message is powerful. Yeah. But the, the, there's there's some people, Tim Mackey's another one, Bible Project mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some people out in Seattle and Oregon um, who I'll listen to, pastors and, and you know, spiritual guys. Um, and they'll talk about like, in the West, especially, we're like, yeah, I'm Christian. And like, what does that mean? Like, there's a spectrum of that. Yeah. Um, and the truth is, not, not m- the majority of Christians, they associate themselves as being Christians, but they don't practice the way. 
yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm, I'm like, of course, I'm on a journey myself, but it goes to show you like how often did Jesus like wake up early and go away, go away and get prayer? You know, like how, how intentional was he? He fasted, he prayed, like yeah. he would find solitude. He would live, he would uh, be silent, you know? Um, and then he was always living from a place of love. So it's just, it's so important to not um, disregard the habits and the process that got people there. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's just like this, the spiritual and physical disciplines have always really like um, intrigued me, right? <laughs> yeah. Because you don't just show up, you don't just like automatically just change into a loving person. Like yeah. you have to like have a, um, there, there's ways to get there. Like you don't become a patient person overnight. You practice being patient. And, yeah. you know, fasting is obviously a great way to flex the patient muscle. Yeah. You can't eat right away. Absolutely. So 100%. That's just been something that I've been intrigued with lately. Like the, the disciplines, the, the habits that go into it. Yeah. And Absolutely. study and prayer is a big one. Yeah. Shifting gears. What's, what's a, let's uh, shift. Let's shift. What's a misconception you think? So you're, you're very like active on online. Yep. Um, we both have kind of grown too late, yeah. lately. Yep. And so more people have discovered us or eyes on us. And so I guess uh, my question is, what's a misconception maybe that you think there is? Like if someone just pulls you up and they're like, oh, it's Flow Life, Colin. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think? What would you want people to know about you that you think might, might be a Ooh, misconception? That's good. Um, man, I'm a, so my, my whole business... Um, has obviously it was started out as a fitness business, right? Um, when I when I first like changed, you know, everything over and was like creating the business and stuff. And yeah. so, but in the meantime, I graduated from PT school, right? So I'm also a physical therapist at the same time. I got my mm -hmm. doctorate in physical therapy mm -hmm. from University of Oklahoma, Boomer. Yeah. Um, and so you know, it was like one of those deals where I I think like when I graduated, like I announced it and stuff like that, and I put like Doctor Colin there. But I think sometimes people are still like. Like, you know what, you know, what do you do? Like, what, what does that look like? Right. And I, I think that there's a big opportunity right now that we're sitting in where a lot of stuff has gone online and mm -hmm. COVID honestly, bro, like obviously it was traumatic. It was, it was tough. Mm -hmm. we, I mean, lost so many people. Like I, my family did, like, it was just, it was a tough time. Mm -hmm. But with that, I also feel like there was a lot of opportunity and a lot of doors opened, Big right? Time. For for a lot of growth, and I think that accelerated health, a lot of dude, that. yeah. And and I I think with the health industry specifically, um, physical therapy is one hundred percent included in this. We you know have been able to evolve and and you know offer these you know services that can hopefully change people's lives online, and so. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, when they look at my page, I just, I hope people see someone that's trying to put out honest, good information. I am not someone that's going to die on any hill. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always researching. I'm always looking for new things. Love that. About I'm you. not, I'm not scared to go back on something that I, I said was good, mm -hmm. uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. Why? Cause I mean, dude, I'm trying to grow just like you are. I'm trying to learn just like everybody else. Mm. Well, at least I hope everybody else is, right? Right, right. And so, like, I, that's one of those things too. Like, with the content I put out, like, I'm I'm constantly putting out stuff I'm doing mm -hmm. to my own body, right? And so, it's not these things that like I'm like making up in my head. I'm like, oh, that looks fun. Like, no, like I'm doing these every single day. I'm yes. feeling how this makes me feel, mm -hmm. and then I'm you know regurgitating that information to my audience. Yeah. And so, I, I hope that people see it as an honest feed. I hope that people see it as an informational feed and, and one that inspires people just to move their bodies more mm -hmm. and i you know we talked a little bit about kettlebells i love kettlebells you know someone asked me the other day i was like you know you don't you don't post any barbell stuff or dumbbell stuff or whatever and i'm like yeah i, I mess around with that every once in a while yeah. but i just love kettlebells it's not because i'm you know i'm not like anti anti dumbbell anti barbell or anything i Better not love be. yeah <laughs> kick you out of the studio <laughs> no i'm kidding <laughs> he's, he's like i'm i'm out um <laughs> No, but I just, I love, I love the way kettlebells make my body feel. 100%. They reveal a lot about stability and mobility and these different, you know, points where I feel like I, I need to work on, mm -hmm. you know, from a strength perspective. And so that's, that's a lot of what I'm putting out nowadays, right? It's fire. Yeah. And you've so. inspired me truly, like, yeah. to see your stuff and how functional it is. Because yeah. that's, to your point, um, when you see your feed, it's very like, oh, this is, this can give me value and it's practical today. Yeah. You know, like the mobility one you did, I think you were on the way to Florida. Like, that's dope. <laughs> like, if you're sitting all day, like, go to freaking Flow Life yes. and uh, and do, like, a mobility exercise. Yeah. It's so important. Um, so I love that. So you want people to know, like, yeah, it's honest. You're 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 doing stuff that you're doing. Yep. And the, the passion and the style is obviously there. So I love that. Um, 
What was your company? Did you have a company before Flow Life? I did. What yeah. was it called? Didn't touch on it. So it actually had Flow Life in the name. Oh. It was Flow Life Sports Performance. It was actually it used to be a foam mm. ro- foam roller company. That's right. You yeah. mentioned the foam yeah. roller. So that was my first business, dude. Uh, if we're talking entrepreneurship, that was I was 23 was trying to get in on the Amazon gold rush, right? Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to make a million dollars, you course. know? So, but yeah, I, I uh, had this idea as a track and field athlete to package, th- you know, four items into, uh, you know, three or four items into a foam roller mm-hmm. and um, basically just kind of have like a four in one deal, right? And, um, you know, for it to be a tool that people could use mm-hmm. to move better, mm-hmm. stay injury free, right? And so the mission, it's funny because the mission hasn't changed much, but right. I went from being a, a physical products brand. Right. And then 2020 happened, COVID, all that stuff, got pregnant, right? And then uh, changed the the name of my business to Flow Life Fitness. Love um, it. And that's where we pivoted to. So now it's a service-based business. But So good. Yeah, man. Yeah. You were built for that. I mean, you were built for the entrepreneur lifestyle too because I think both you and I have product stuff based in yeah. our future. Absolutely. 100%. Maybe a collaborative effort who knows but uh entrepreneurship quick question before we dive into uh, maybe like the most impactful book mm-hmm. um that you would recommend because i love that question i love like reading honestly but what's the number one key to for you being an elite entrepreneur yeah what do you think the biggest key is um that will that's made the biggest difference in your life. Mm. You know, is it organization? Is it, yeah. is it, you know, is it waking up early? It could, like, what is it for you? Yeah. The key to successful entrepreneurship could be being resilient. No, that's a good question. I think, I think that, uh, resilience plays a role because here's the thing. Like when you first start a business, it never goes perfectly planned. Never. Like unless you've done it before and you kind of know what to expect, mm-hmm. it might go well. Yeah. Dude, you run into problems every single day. You're constantly troubleshooting. Yep. And you know, you might do something for two or three months that works great. And then you run into a roadblock, right? And you got to reiterate something. You got to yep. change some back-end systems. Mm-hmm. You got to change your sales process. Like there's always something you can be improving. Mm-hmm. And so to me, instead of looking at entrepreneurship as this like fantasy of like a lifestyle thing dude look at it as a game dude mm. i'm playing a game every day when i wake up and Love i like that. i evaluate what my business looks like i'm like where can we use some work where can we make improvements and you know take that into the rest of the day on like how i spend my time mm-hmm. you know because i'm i'm fulfilling the service right now right with what i'm doing right as as a coach but i think down the road once i scale i'm able to add people to the staff and things like that you know, my, my job will then be able to, you know, be more, you know, looking down on the business and kind of saying, okay, what can we do? Right. Mm-hmm. Like kind of be detached from, you know, the business as a whole yeah. and being able to say, okay, where can we make improvements and, you know, continue to make progress going forward resilience. And then dude, it's a game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Every athlete, every athlete I know has lost, has failed, has done poorly at something has gotten injured there, you know, they, no one's had a perfect path to where they are yeah. as an athlete. Yeah. I grew up as an athlete. I just relate to that the most. Yeah. So when you look at the the whole process of a game and the emotions that go into it, mm. there's ups, there's downs, there's times when you think you're going to be ahead and then you're back behind. It's like, that's what happens, dude. That's life. It's you part know? Of it. Wake up and play the game mm. every freaking day. And wow. if you do and you, you don't quit, you're going to be successful. That's so freaking spot on, yeah. bro. So spot on, like failures feedback. And, and if you take the approach of it's a game and I'm practicing, you know, getting good at playing this game, like that's really beautiful. It does free you up to experience failure. I think the hard part too is like detaching ourselves personally from that failure because our business is part of who we are. Sure. So I think that's a, that's a interesting idea, but, um, you know, the, the less personal you can take anything I think is healthy, right? <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. So that's really good. Has there been a, a book that's made a major impact on you? Are you a big reader outside of yes. the word? Yeah. Um, no, I, I look at books as obviously the resources, right? Like, and I, my, my wife makes fun of me. Like I love like reading to learn, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I, every once in a while I'll read for pleasure, but for the most part I'm reading to learn. Right. Like I, I want to grow and mm-hmm. that's just, I just like it. Like yeah. it's just fun. And that's relaxing to me too. Right. The one thing, um, has been a book that no joke has changed the trajectory of my life. Summarize the one thing in a couple ideas or phrases. Dude, basically 
that whole book is centered around the idea that if you continue to show up and you do the the one thing that's the most important thing to move the needle forward mm-hmm. in your life. Mm-hmm. And this, this you know you can have a lot of like a lot of one things. Yeah. Your role as a husband, your role as a father, mm. your role as a business owner, mm-hmm. right? Even even your health. Like those are four things. You're probably going to have one thing though that you can show up in all four of those roles. Yeah. That is going to help you be better, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So the one thing today, when you know I wake up and with my wife, it's like, hey, maybe I I tell her she's beautiful, you know, as soon as she wakes up, and and as many times as I can throughout the day, mm. you know, and then you know, looking at like my my business, it's like, okay, how like what's the one thing that's going to help me, you know, show up and be a better coach? Yeah. Right. Mm. And that's you know keeping my clients accountable, mm-hmm. right? Messaging them, mm-hmm. checking in on them, you know, communicating with them. You know, as a father, it's like, what's the one thing that's going to help my kids thrive and feel loved, right? And then that's me being present with them. Mm. So it's like having these like little hats that you look at your life and you evaluate your life and you're like, okay, and dude, you can apply this to finances. Like, so I think that that's, that's what that book summarizes. Yeah. And that's why I love it yeah. is because as, as a coach, it's like you look at what that, the meaning of that book l- looks like. And it's like, it helps you simplify mm. everything. Yes. Down to these really like, hey, I know what I'm supposed to do. Yep. You wake up early. Mm-hmm. You get into the word. You drink some water. Mm. Like it's just like these yeah. little Move things. Move your body like, a little Yeah. Bit. Like, like it's yeah. like these little things. It's like it doesn't have to be this like massive decision making process. Mm-hmm. It's now this really simple, you know, thing where it's like, okay, let's rock and roll. Yeah. It also helps me not get entrepreneurial ADHD and want to yeah. start 18 businesses yes. today. Because yes. <laughs> that's that's me like every day. Like, ooh, that looks like a good idea. So Bro. Just, just staying focused, yeah. right? And that showing up, being intentional. That's that's the big premise of that book. Fire. That was yeah, a yeah. great summary. And it, it really is, a, I, I agree with you. It's one of the most impactful yeah. ideas because it does simplify it. Um, I think also uh, when, you were th- when you were talking, I couldn't help but think, I heard someone say like, talking about growing your hair out and you know people who follow me they're like oh they probably have noticed my hair is getting longer the but locks, I s- baby dude it's wild and it doesn't look as, as good as your flow but dude, I'm, I'm trying no to get shot there. no please it is yours looks way more control mine's out of control stop it mine's got a little hillbilly in it too stop. well it's, it's a good hit it's a good hit <laughs> boomer sooner boomer baby um yes. but but he mentioned he, he was like uh i think everyone's everyone should grow their hair out like pe- yeah. for people who can't do it um, at least once. Yeah. And he goes, you know why? Because like you have to get through these awkward stages. Mm-hmm. Like you don't just grow hair and it just happens overnight. It also doesn't happen perfectly. So he's like, it's probably one of the best examples of your physical fitness journey. Yes. Because yeah. if you can't show up on days you don't want to be there or on weeks when things are going crazy and and, and the last thing you want to do is prioritize waking up a little bit early, doing yeah. the, the habits, the steps, the water, the movement. Um, if you can't get through the awkward hair stages, you'll never reap the benefits of a long, long, so like good. flowing hair. And so it's it's a really cool idea in, in my mind. And I, I really try to preach that to my clients. Yes. I say preach. I try to encourage them. <laughs> try not to sound like I'm preaching, but but truly like, if there's one skill, I think you can you can raise all. What's the quote? Like a, a rising tide raises mm. all ships. Yeah, dude, the tide is you just trusting the process yep. and repeating the process, especially when you don't feel like it. So to your point, resiliency and consistency, it's kind of one and the same, and it's probably the best thing for our businesses, our physical fitness, our health, our relationships is just show up. So it's like, how do we cultivate that? You know, how do we increase that? And part of it's getting in conversations like this. Part of it's hearing, you know, one of the things I love about you, and I got a million things on my list, is truly like, dude, you're you're an intentional person. The first time I met you, you 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 did what you were saying here. This this man practices what he preaches. You went to your wife and you just like it was just something offhand, like, hey, beautiful, what's this? Small stuff like that. Like you you were you were referred to her lovingly Mm -hmm. and that says so much about you so i remember hearing that i'm like dude i had evidence before but after small things like that i'm like dude i know this guy like i know the type of man (laughs) he is by the way he treats his wife and the words he uses so i i commend you for being consistently like 
you're practicing what you preach. Dude, I appreciate that. And not not Thank everyone you. does that. Yeah. You know, I to be that. fair. Likewise. Same so. thing to you. If you ever want to hype up, dude, just come to the studio. I'll freaking hype you up because that's what we do here, baby. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm flattered. No, seriously, I but appreciate truly. it. That's uh, it's humbling to hear. And like, I mean, dude, it's, that's I hope that. I, I I mean, I love my wife and, uh, you know, I, I hope that for everyone that gets to meet us and, you know, that gets to meet her, she's an incredible human being. But, mm. I mean, that's uh, that's one thing I think it is lost in, in society these days, dude. Like, be in love with your wife. Yeah. It's cool. Mm-hmm. It's really cool, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Way don't cool be then. too prideful. Yeah. Like, don't be too prideful. Like, you know, show up every day and, mm. and see what you can do for her. You mm. know, if you're married, if you're not, bro, start becoming the man that that woman deserves to marry. Wow. Straight up. Yeah. Best advice. I actually heard that from a preacher. Uh, Craig? No, it was, uh, dude, it was the guys. They're down in, in Dallas. I'm blanking on the name of it. Mm-hmm. Um, the Porch. Oh, yeah. The yeah. porch, yeah. yeah. Dude, they have a great ministry, and I can't remember if it was JP or the other guy uh, preaching. I think it was JP. But he was saying, like, he's like, hey, like, dudes, if you're single, and I heard this while I was single, by the way. Like, hey, if you're single right now, like, you know, be in that singleness. You know, obviously, yeah, there's times that it kind of stinks. Like, maybe you want to, you know, you want to get hitched up or whatever. Sure. You know, but uh, if you're not married and you're not dating and, you know, you've got time to spend on yourself, dude, that that's the time. Yeah. Invest in yourself. Become yeah. the man yes. that the woman that you've dreamt of deserves to marry. Right. Right? Because when you set that standard, now it's like the, your dream girl. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, I'm striving to become the guy that deserves that. Right? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. I and know then, it was a tangent. No, but. no, it's beautiful. And then then, then <laughs> yes. all of a sudden, you are like, again, you you – you attract that type of person in your life by yeah. by doing the things that that person's looking for. Amen. Whereas we're like always trying to look for the quick fix, yep. uh, myself included. I mean, in fact, like I've been, I've been, I share my stuff all over sometimes in podcasts for sure, but really heavily like, dude, when I was single, I was doing stuff like, you know, porn yeah. for instance. Yeah. Big, big in our society because we get exposed to it at such a young age. Yeah. Now we have phones and the younger generation probably gets exposed to it earlier. Brutal. Struggled with that for years. And and I think back and, and even like dating Gigi, I wasn't even leading spiritually. Getting married to her, first year of marriage, not not the leader I should have been. Yeah. You know, and I still I'm still not technically like <laughs> like I want to be. Yes. But praise God, he's actually like broken some chains. You yeah. know, he's helped me yeah. step out of the dark and into the light and to freedom. And, 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 and because it's no longer I who live, but Christ in me. Yeah. But dude, the, I think back to me and I, and I hopefully am encouraging younger guys. That's part of why I share stuff on social is like, I've been there. I've been, I've been the dude to like watch porn consistently thinking it's not affecting my life. Yep. But yep. it's like, dude, you're, you're missing the opportunity to become the man your future wife needs. Dude. And those habits, those thoughts, those actions are not giving you life yeah they're taking from you and it's like dude that's that's everything so yeah. so yeah. if you're in a sing, if you're in that singleness season and and um you know maybe ready and like getting impatient like okay where is she truly that's the best advice i heard is become the man now like you don't wait till like you're gonna get married yeah. and that's gonna solve all your problems like get your ducks in a row as best you can now yeah for amen that. yeah dude, amen yeah it's so good yeah, and that's dude to that point too. Same thing. Double tangent. Right. Yeah. Like I mean you it's and me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, am I got am, am I done? <laughs> dude. Well, it's like that's that just applies to so much. I mean, even like I think even married guys, right? Like like you said, like, dude, temptation's temptation. And I'm not I'm not even talking so much like, yes, like pornography, like lust, all these things that like, you know, can can rip your your relationship apart mm-hmm. from your your spouse. But I'm also talking about like even just temptations with like, dude, like your health, right? It's like, dude, how often do you think I want to snooze the alarm? Hmm. Everyone's like, dude, you're so good at getting up early. I'm like, dude, I want to snooze my alarm every day when it goes off. Mm. I'm tired every day when it, it like doesn't get easier. Come on. I wish it would. Yeah. But it doesn't. And so like I, I mean, there's some days where I pop up and I'm like ready to roll, but that's not most of the time. It's mm. not the reality. I, mm. I want to go back to bed because I'm tired. Bro, how could you build, how could you build resilience if it was just easy every time? Yeah, exactly. Like you heard that, you heard that like quote where it's like, I asked God for strength. He gave me battles to fight. (laughs) Yes. It's like, that's how it works. Yeah. Well, it's it's like, as soon as that's the, the, you know, the whole thing with like, once you give your life, it's like, you think, you know, give your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. You think everything's going to be easy from there. And it's, dude, it couldn't be further from the truth. Right. You know, in a lot of ways it might be more challenging. Mm. Right. But you fight the good fight. You get up every day. You keep showing up. Like those are the things you can do. 
everyone's situation is different. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the temptations aspect, it's like, as, especially as men, it's like, dude, rein it in. I'm not, I'm not perfect. I know you're not perfect. <laughs> we're not even going to try and pretend no, like uh-uh. we're perfect. Mm-mm. Dude, just freaking show up. Yeah. Rein it in. Like, get up and do what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Bottom line. That's fire because, uh, to your point, that's a really good contrast because it, it does speak to the, like, most obvious, like, hey, that's probably not the healthiest thing for you. Yeah. But then the way you just brought it back down to earth in a very practical way is, like, the alarm clock, the snooze button. Like, like don't don't be thinking we're all set because we're like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not yeah. like, going and cheating on my spouse and doing this right. stuff. Yes. But, like, dude, don't think you're in the clear because you're just, like, settling with your physical fitness yeah. or settling in different areas of life. Um, so, so that's really good, man. I love that. Um, marriage wise, what do you think you would have told yourself like as advice, you know, you've been married how many years now? Uh, almost five. Yeah. Almost five. Four and a half. So what would you have like wish, like, okay, go back to Mm -hmm. 24 year old Colin. Yeah. 23. 23. What would you tell him? Like Mm pre-marriage. What would be your premarital counsel to your 23 year old goodness self? One sec. Sorry. <laughs> Dude, that's my, by the way, that's my same uh, sound when my alarm goes off. Is it? Yeah, it is. It's nice and calming. I love it. Besides Gigi, she is the boss. <laughs> All right, so we just got the uh, camera back. Oh, we got my puppy. Oh, yeah, he loves socks, dude. He's a freak. I saw that. Love socks. Probably chewing on the socks. I think he's fine. Yeah. He's been yeah. Sitting at the door the whole time. That's cool. What's up, bro? We got Drew at my feet right now. I'll tell you what, man. To your point, yeah, he goes, Colin calls him Drusif. I love that. Um, but yeah, he, we we did uh, go from zero to a hundred with the dog and and um, and baby. That was wild for a little bit. Dude. He was harder oh, in I some bet. respects. Yeah, I mean, waking up at night, like, want, yeah, dude. When I saw you guys got a puppy, and obviously I knew your wife was pregnant, I was like, let's go. Dang. Like this dude's, this dude's dude, he thinks he in. thinks fatherhood's a walk in the park. I can't wait to see him. I, well, I was like in my head, I'm like, hey, like they're just prepping. Like, yeah, they're getting ready for their baby girl to get born, like straight up. So. Well, we can we can get into this, but yeah, um, the the whole, I mean, God's so good, dude. Yeah, hey, amen. God is so good. He's so faithful, and he's so he's good and faithful regardless of circumstance and regardless of how well I show up um, and how good I am, you know, yeah. and how faithful yeah. I am. And thank God, because if it was based on me and my effort, then I really would be discouraged. But because I look to him and bank on his consistency, his perfection, his faithfulness, I'm freed up to then chase consistency yes. in my own life. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing I'm not, um, sorry. Knowing I'm not, uh, I can take this off. Knowing I'm not, uh, you know, condemned or judged if I, you know, miss a day or, you know, you, you, you yeah. have, we're going to make mistakes. So anyway, God, God's so good. He's so faithful. He's taught me so much and my wife included over yeah. the course of these past few years. And, and so this kind of leads back to the question I asked you with mm-hmm. the premarital counseling is, you know, I think, I think what doesn't get related enough on uh, in our social media like landscape and and culture is obviously naturally we want to show the best things yeah. possible the honeymoons and the sure. and the vacations and all that um even day to day stuff I'm guilty like we don't post any fight right no which yeah. it would make sense to by the way so don't feel bad that you're not posting your fight <laughs> to like be real but yeah. but the point is we've gone through stuff that we we came out the other side much stronger yeah. And we walked through some dark stuff and some like trying stuff, but it gave us so much like strength on the other side. And for for both Gigi and I, uh, Drew was, uh, we were praying for healing. You know, mm-hmm. we were walking through some stuff and, and we needed healing, man. Like yeah. I needed, yeah. like I remember praying, my my best prayer, I'll go on record for this, it sounds weird to say that, but my, be- my best prayer was, was maybe four words and it was we need you jesus mm. and that was it bro and i was freaking bawling my eyes out because i was like we need we need you we need healing and next thing you know um we get a dog and that sounds funny but he was a part of that healing process man yeah and so um so yeah he, he awesome. was he was a, a part of that process it allowed her to step into that motherhood type of role and then when baby was born, when Gianna was born, then she was already like a, ahead of the game. And it just, it changed both of us. Yeah. And so I think that's how God works. Like he can change things instantly, but he also can like use other people yeah. and things in your life. Um, so it's a long-winded 
way to just say he's so good. And oftentimes people don't talk about the the dark seasons you can potentially walk through as a married couple. But if you can understand like and, and make God that third, the triangle, right? It's you, your spouse, and God at the at the top. And the closer y'all grow to, to God is the closer you grow to each other. Mm-hmm. If that's the case, dude, you can weather any storm, bro. Yeah. You'll get me, you'll make it through yeah. whatever life throws your way because with God all things are possible, right? So, um, in light of that, dude, like, yeah, what would you, what would you tell your your twenty three year old self, like preparing for marriage? Maybe like something you'd want him to know. Looking back, mm. it's not a competition. Mm. Not a competition, and what I mean by that is like. I mean, it's funny because my dad actually told me that before I got married to my wife. So I did get that piece of advice. Interesting. Dude, it, it's like it, that. And I say that like it, it can apply to every scenario you go through, mm-hmm. right? And, and I feel like it kind of like reverts back to the whole idea of ownership, right? Mm-hmm. Like being able, as a, especially as like a male, like a prideful dude who's got an ego. Mm-hmm. Like, um, and my wife, same thing. She's got pride. She's got an ego. Dude, like when you're walking through life together and, you know, little things come up, dude, don't let them, don't let those turn into big issues. Mm. It's not a competition. Well, admit when you're wrong. Like in, in most of the time, in every situation, you probably could have done something to prevent Mm. maybe offending your wife, making her feel unloved. Like love, love and respect was one of the best books that we both read before we got married. Mm. In that that whole cycle of like you know making sure she feels loved and her you know in the you know the the other side of that making me feel respected right mm-hmm. um, and obviously I want to feel loved and all that stuff and she want to feel respected mm-hmm. as well but it's like at the end of the day I feel like a lot of times men and women like as creatures crave those two things women crave love yeah. men crave respect yeah and um, not in an egotistical way either it's just kind of how we're wired it's what we need too you know and so mm-hmm. I think like when you look at that whole design when I'm not making her feel loved, maybe she's like, you know, not really wanting to show me all the respect in yeah, the world, yeah. right? Like, and so it's this But the vicious... way we see it is like, <laughs> she's not showing me respect. Dude. So like, therefore, I'm not going to like love her as I should. But exactly. it goes back to the root where it's like, Dude. if you want something, you got to give something. <laughs> keep keep showing up. Yeah. Keep showing up and, and give when you don't feel like it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So like, you know, don't treat relationships like a competition, and um, lay down your pride at the door. Mm. Like our big, our big saying, like that I, I we've had since we were engaged, was always be willing to come to the table. And the table is a metaphor for the fact that like always be willing to come, sit down, mm-hmm. and have a conversation. Yeah. The silent treatment does not work. Yeah. I can promise you, you're just bearing stuff that's yeah. gonna come up later. You're gonna get bitter. Like the silent treatment does not work. And you guys yelling at each other, like, that doesn't fix it either. Mm. Come to the table and just talk to each other, mm. you know? Um, so I feel like those are, like, the big, like, pillars of our, our marriage, right? Like, don't treat it like a competition. You're yeah. on the same team. Yeah. Gets even even more so when you get kids, right? Yeah. Like, that whole new responsibility of, like, oh, we, like, these things. Like, th- they have our genetics. Like, we shape, <laughs> like we're supposed to keep them alive. Yeah. You know, like, my wife's breastfeeding. I'm over here, like, okay, like, how do I help, you know, like, changing diapers That's a strange stuff. place to be. Yeah, it's like, you, you look at ways. It's like, our roles are different, fundamentally different mm. with raising children, for mm. instance. That's just a good, like, example. Sure. And it, it could be so easy for me to be like, Oh, I've changed every diaper today and like this and that. But my wife's over there, dude. She's she's freaking keeping that human being alive. Mm-hmm. She's the one that carried it around for nine months. Right. I didn't wow. have to do anything during wow. those nine months. You know what I mean? So it's like, just lay the pride down, dude. Mm-hmm. You're on the same team, work together. Like there's gonna be times in your life with a spouse, with a partner, whatever, where you might have to give more than them. Mm-hmm. Be okay with that. Right. Show up for that. Don't keep tabs. Don't keep tabs. Yeah. Like show up for those moments and look for them. Look for those moments where you can show up and you can help that other person. Yeah. Maybe through a time when they're struggling, mm. right? Mm. Because when you need it, they're gonna do the same for you. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? Yes. And it's not this transactional thing. It's just, dude, that's that's what marriage is, mm. and that's how you go about treating it like you're one under the Lord, and and you know pushing each other closer to Jesus every day. Yeah. Bro. So, yeah. so dope. Long, long answer. No, but that's no, dude. If you're spitting fire like that, just go on forever. That's that's what's uh, cool about Jesus. Yeah, Jesus is like he comes, he comes to the earth and he goes, 
you know, if, if someone makes you go a mile, like go, go two miles with them. Yep. Right. Yep. And like at first I, I, I didn't really understand what that meant, but, but after reading this genius of Jesus book by Erwin McManus, shout out to pastor out there in Hollywood, genius himself. One of my favorite lines, actually side note is that there's genius in all of us yeah. because we're all made by the divine, right? We're made by God. We have a touch of genius in us be, so because we're here. Uh, but but he goes like Jesus was so fundamentally like upside down to the world, right? The kingdom of God is upside down to the world's kingdom. It is. Yeah. Like like the golden rule is not what the or the world or culture would just create. It's every man for himself, doggy doggy world. Like that's the world's system. But but anyway, Christ comes in. He goes, if someone makes you go a mile, go with them too. And what he did there, and I didn't catch it until this this chapter was, it wasn't just like to do it, but it, it's to it's to take back the power of your own life and say, instead of like being grudgingly like go with them a mile, it's like, no, you actually get more joy and you'll, you'll live a life that's abundant when you go, okay, this man wants to force me to go a mile. I'll go with you too. And like, I'll carry your other thing too. And let's talk about life. Let's do. And so you're like, then the person's like, what in the world? Like it used to be a treatment and I'll, I think I'm going to get clear thoughts here. But it would be the Romans in this scenario, he explained it. The Romans would force, let's say, a Jew to carry their um, uh, carry their horse or something yeah. like that, carry yeah, yeah. something along yeah, yeah. the route. Right. So that's w- what the whole thing was. Like if someone forced you to go a mile, go with them too. So instead of being this like punishment for the Jews, mm-hmm. it would be like a, it would be like taking back the the power, like the autonomy of their life and being able to be salt and light to other people. Yeah. So it was just like this crazy. cool idea, and I'm, and I'm like, I love that. So to your point, go with someone the extra mile. You're on the same team, and I think the more we understand, I hope you get this vibe too with this the studio setup and Josh and I, we are all on the same team. Mm-hmm. So when there's competition, it's really just false competition. Yeah. If there's seeming competition out there, like when you win, for instance, I don't get any type of jealousy. I'm like, dude, Colin, like, like for instance, we're in the same space. You have yeah. clients, right, I have right. clients. When you have business success, I'm like, let's go, praise God. Because your message is getting out there and you're right. impacting more lives. I'm like, that's a win for me too. Yeah. So that's competition awesome. is really just a veil, I think. And the more we can understand we are connected and people's wins are our wins and people's losses are really our losses too. And we're not disconnected from the world around us. We're actually so embedded together. It's pretty mind blowing. Mm. Um, so I love that. You're, we're, we're not in the same, we're not on different teams. We're actually on the same team with marriage. Amen. And that's a big one. So the ego death, like you got to die to yourself, man. Yeah. And that's hard, bro. Yeah. I, I struggle with every that day. almost every day. Yeah. No, I awesome. might've had one perfect. No, nope, no. Nope. I was gonna say one perfect day. Nope. Um, <laughs> yeah. You can get yourself to, to think that. Right. Yeah, it's it's wild, man. And that's again the upside down nature of God and his style. Yeah. His signature is always like blow your mind cuz life happens through death. Yeah. Like look to the cross, right? Yeah. The the worst thing possible produce the best possible outcome. Crazy. Like what? Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, that's that's just uh so good. So I think I love that um marital advice. What's a question, Colin, that yeah. I haven't asked yet? that you wish I would have? Ooh. You know? Hmm. Question that you wish I would have asked. That's a good question. Yeah. It's a good question. I, it's saving my, yeah, I'm saving my butt because I'm like, well, dang, like you're going to walk away. Say, I wish we would have talked about this. Yeah. No, no, that's good. So, uh, I mean, dude, you, you covered so much, you know? I mean, I feel like uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't shared a lot about myself. Mm-hmm really publicly, you know, like I haven't shared a lot of my story. And I think, I think podcasts, like I, I want to do more, you know, I, I do want to do more now that I feel like I've, I've had my head in the trenches building a business and things like that and becoming a dad and all that stuff. I am ready to start talking about stuff more. And, uh, can I pause you and yeah. just say, dude, you're freaking made for it. <laughs> like you, I can't wait to see you step more into Thanks, sharing. Like you're a natural um, world needs to hear what you have to offer. Like you were created for a reason, and so continue stepping into that. I freaking love seeing it, dude. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. All the more reason you should move to Florida. Hey, I mean, we could just we could do this all the time. Just just get grab some coffee and roll. No, yeah, but uh, I mean, you know, back to what you asked. Like honestly, we we talked about so much. Like you know, I, I'm sure we'll I'll get to share at some point. You know, just little things about 
how I was raised and, you know, just the lessons that I've, I've come across. But I mean, the big, the big takeaway is always like, I don't have it figured out. And, uh, I, I think, um, I think it's easy to think that when you see like, you know, two guys, social media followings, whatever, it's like, dude, we're just every, every day. Like I've watched you like hanging out with your wife, Gigi and your, your daughter. And it's just like, and obviously Drew can't Mm -hmm. forget Drew, but it's like, (laughs) dude, we're just, we're men. We're trying to figure it out. We're trying to lead well. We're trying to serve well. We're trying to love well. And we're trying to like take advantage of every day. Mm -hmm. And I think like at the end of the day, like that's where I'm at in life, you know? And I, uh, I want to build a better business. I want to be a better husband. Um, a better friend and mm. son and father and uh, uh, you know I'm, I'm trying to do that every day and I think that you know no one's journey is going to be a straight line mm. and uh, I know mine sure, sure has not been yeah. but looking back on it getting to talk and reflect on it like through this type of medium is so cool because I think you get to you get to dive into that mm-hmm. like stuff that you really haven't thought about before mm-hmm. so this is this has been cool this yeah. has been life giving for me Did I've enjoyed so much. it like. Just uh, what a cool platform that you've already built with this. Getting to share this with the, your following, it's Bro, awesome. And it's and it's uh, it's all God, as you know. It's all God. Um, it, it's uh, it's been a it's been a journey. I think whenever you put yourself out there, I've talked about this with Josh a lot. Um, the podcast, for instance, it's a journey. It's such a beautiful journey to go on because you're learning about yourself and you're also just growing inherently. Meaning, I first hit record. And so nervous. And, mm. there, you know, nerves happen. Excitement happens. Uh, I'm very careful to use certain words because I'm never nervous. I'm just excited. Yes. Because right? uh, they're very <laughs> similar. And it's like, if you tell yourself that, yeah, boom. But I remember recording my first podcast, Colin, and I was like, dude, I in post-production, I would clip it. I would edit it. I would take away the ums, the ahs, the pauses, the awkward stuff. And, um, and because I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. And I want to show people. I want to. I'm mindful of what people perceive, right? Mm. Early on. It, that was a lot and it took so much energy. So eventually a couple of episodes come out and you, and you start, you know, being more consistent. And then I'm like, dude, why, why am I doing this? Like, I'd rather kind of just be real. And then I found myself more me because I said, well, screw it. I'm not going to be perfect. So let me just be me and yeah. be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. So I allowed myself to step into more freedom and say, well, look, I'm going to mess up words. I'm going to say the wrong thing and I, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be me. And boom, that opens the door to you becoming more you. And that's what I'm all about. I always tell people, it's like, you're not going to be, I'm not going to be you. You're not going to be me. Yeah. And like, we're not called to do that. Yeah. Like that, that, that's a disservice to God for creating you the way he created you. If you're trying to be someone else, right? So be, becoming more you is the goal, the man he created you to be, right? So it's not about just like becoming selfishly who you want to be, <laughs> but who God puts you on earth to be. Yeah. That's who you need to become more of. And the podcast journey, what you do on social media, what we do is get try to get ourselves out there a little bit more, put ourselves out there, and it's all value-based, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and it's beautiful because you learn a learn a lot about yourself on the journey. So I think, I think, I don't know, I'm I'm just spitballing now, but if you're if you're getting a tug to create content or create a podcast or yeah. have conversations. The best thing I did was just put myself out there. Yeah. Honestly, that yeah. was that was really the 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 key domino for me that really opened the world yeah. in, in a different way. So, dude, amen. We need to have more too of these conversations whether you're here locally <laughs> or uh, or elsewhere because I feel yes. like we have a lot more to talk about. We do. Truly. Yeah, dude, and I think I mean these conversations, you know, everything on Instagram, social media, it's all filtered, right? these are totally unfiltered yeah you know right. just like raw conversations and i think that's what's cool about podcasts i like i had someone ask me the other day like what like where'd you learn all this business stuff or how to set this up or that up podcast yeah Hermosi. honestly yeah yeah <laughs> alex Hermosi, yeah. bro dude's a savage uh, yeah yeah just consuming right like mm-hmm. i i love listening to things um I, I'll sit down and read, but mm-hmm. I don't sit. I don't sit still very well. I know. So, <laughs> so I'm a big audiobook podcast mm-hmm. guy, and like I just every time I have a spare moment, which maybe not often, but it's like every time I do, it's like early in the morning, you yep. know, late at night when I'm cooking dinner. It's like that's. Just I, kn- I know you're the on, same bro. way as me. You'll you'll put your headphones in your phone and do the yes. dishes or something like that. Oh yeah, I've, d- I've done that many times. Yes, water the plants. Yes. Same thing, bro. It's yeah, crazy. Every time you get a moment. But it's all, it all goes back to just, like you said, putting yourself out there. Mm-hmm. You know, I think uh, learning is hard for people. It's like they don't know where to start. It's like just just start consuming. Mm-hmm. Start consuming stuff. Like mm-hmm. look up, like who's the best in the area you want to become good in, you know? Right. Accounting. Right. You know, becoming a pilot. It's like, dude, 
there's people who put out stuff all day, every day. Mm -hmm. We put out fitness stuff. You know, you put out a lot of like awesome, like leadership, spiritual stuff. Like I put obviously some more like mobility and physical mm -hmm. therapy stuff. Like everyone's got their little thing. Like mm -hmm. just go follow people, mm -hmm. consume their stuff, like support them. And yeah. it's, it's, that's the best way to learn. Yeah. So. Love that. And yeah. you create too though. So you consume and create because you're a yeah. journal guy. Yeah. You, obviously you create content, but you also, you also do a good job of not just consume, but you're also writing your yes. your your thinking and creating which i love yeah because i think a lot of people can get stuck into the consuming all day all day and like that it's weird because you you consume all day and yeah. then you feel depleted yeah but um it's not the depleted from a fast of lack of food but it's more depleted from after uh thanksgiving dinner and you're like <laughs> holy cow i can't move Dude. you know what i'm saying so you're it's, over consumed you're it's you're, ridiculous and i don't know how you feel about like being creative I get energized by it. Mm. I might have gotten four hours of sleep last night. If I get into a workflow and I'm yeah. being creative and like I'm a big coffee guy, like uh -huh. drinking coffee. So like if I'm, you know, drinking coffee, like dude, that those those moments I'm like the most energized, the mm. most alive. Yeah. You know? And I think it's fun because like you said, too many people consume too much. Mm. I was telling you and Josh this earlier, like my wife and I, one of the best things we've done is put a time limit on our phones for social yeah. media, right? It's like if she has the passcode, well she did. I just now got it from her. Uh oh. <laughs> Carissa. <laughs> yeah. So, but we set our limits like an hour, yeah. right? And that was across all the platforms. And for those of you who don't know, like I'm also, that includes responding to DMs, responding business. to comments, business stuff, like creating the content sometimes. And that's actually why I got the codes because it was taking me a minute to produce stuff, right? But regardless, <laughs> all that to say, yeah. just set, set limitations and boundaries, mm -hmm. you know? Especially first thing in the morning, don't freaking start scrolling. Like, mm -hmm. you know, leave your phone in the bathroom and then just leave it there. Turn the alarm off, leave it there and go do your morning stuff before Fire. you ever go pick it up. Because I feel like if you start like that, instead of starting with what other people are telling you about their lives, Ooh. right? It's like, Ooh. then you can... You can get rolling on the right foot. So that's fire. I was gonna ask you how you stay spiritually fit, and we've talked about that. So yeah, um, but that's a good point because what I feel like, and I've heard it from somewhere, and it makes sense. Naturally, I'm like that does make sense, and I agree. But they've done studies where the first thing you set your attention to, your mind on, your focus on, through your eyes and your senses, in the morning and at night, play the biggest role in shaping who you mm -hmm. are. And I'm like, yo, I mean, that's that's so freaking good. And how many days? I've wasted mm. on on uh, just random stuff. Obviously, sometimes very unhealthy stuff. But it's like, how much how much time I've let the world tell me who I am versus waking up and boom, God's promise. Yeah, boom, God's promise. This is who you are. Yeah, this is whose you are. You know, created on purpose for a purpose. Greatness within you, and created in God's image. Like like He's gonna use all things together for your good, like all those promises. Yeah. It's a lot different than waking up and reacting to something like on social media or the news. And it's like, oh, well, that my 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 political party uh, who I don't like did this again. And it's like, bro, you're going to wake up and start your energetic day like that? No, you're not. So get off of the phone, bro. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that to myself too. So yeah, trust two me, hands like, raised. Yeah, like Because I'll fall into that temptation too, dude, trust me. But, but yeah, you, yeah. Couldn't couldn't hit the nail on the head better because even before going to bed, like I I leave my phone in the bathroom so like I have to get out of bed to turn it off in the morning, but like dude, my wife laughs at me. I'll lay on the floor with my feet up on the wall and just breathe. <laughs> do you do it too? <laughs> dude, I've done I've done that. I've done weirder stuff, honestly, bro. <laughs> trust me. It's the most relaxed. If you have trouble falling asleep, which yeah. I don't ever anymore, I hit the pillow and I'm yeah. out. Yeah. But like. Uh, and I think my honestly part of it's probably that though, because I have mm. this like my brain associates certain things leading up to bedtime with yeah. like, oh, we're about to go to bed. Sure. Like, so do you get that routine in place? Doesn't take long. Everything, dude. That yeah. evening ritual is huge. Yeah. Last question, Colin. Hit me. What's the meaning of life? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I read a I read a book. Uh, I read a page in a book um, yesterday or two days ago, and it was talking about having confidence for the tomorrows or having confidence in tomorrow. And the quote was, faith is the ability to look to the future with hope instead of with fear. Mm. So my question is like, what are, you, what are you looking forward to? Like, I think it's a great way to end the conversation. What are you hopeful, like what, what gets you excited as you look to the future? Mm. Mm. I get excited because, you know, when I look at, like, I look at my wife and I's life and, like, obviously so grateful. Just we, We've got, I mean, everything we could have ever asked for, honestly. Like, it, we're so blessed. 
Um, doesn't mean it hasn't been hard at different times, but we're, we've been super blessed. But when I think about the next day or the next month or the next year, like where I'm going to be a year from now, mm-hmm. what I think about is where was I a year ago? Mm. Yeah. Where am I today? Right. Right. And obviously if you've digressed in the last year, that might not be the best way to look at it. But True. I just think about how much I have learned in 365 days, Right how much so better true. I've gotten at all those hats I mentioned earlier with the mm. one thing, like how much better I've gotten at those things. Like, yeah. you know, financially, like with the business, like how much of a better coach I am, how much mm. better husband mm. and father I am. And not to beat my chest, it's just like I am working on those every day. Yeah. But remind yourself like a year ago from today, like you were a different person, mm. right? And you've grown so much. So think about that when you're thinking about tomorrow. Mm. And think about that, how that tomorrow and what you do tomorrow is going to set you up for a year from now. Yeah. I'm 28, about to be 29. When I'm 29 next year in May, bro, we're going to have a conversation and be like, yeah, dude, it's crazy. Yep. Like, look how much has happened in the last year. Right. You know? Mm. You don't have to sit around and wait to retire for life to get good. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, your life can change so quickly mm. from so many different angles when you decide to get up and put yourself out there in the morning and stick to the things that you know you sh- are supposed to be doing mm. that are going to move the needle forward in each yeah. of those little categories I mentioned earlier. Yeah. And so sit good. down and have that talk with yourself. Yeah. Because that's what gets me excited. And I'm like super optimistic. Like I, t- I tell my wife like all these dreams and she's, dude, God bless her. She's so <laughs> awesome. She's like, okay. Like she's so sweet. You know, <laughs> that was actually a good I, impression. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like, I, I, and I'm so grateful for her cause she's never snuffed my lamp out. Like mm. my light, like yeah. she's let my light shine Yeah. in terms of just like the metaphor of just me having these big dreams, Yeah. having these big dreams for my family and like what kind of life we're going to have. And like all, you know, I'm always thinking about that stuff, mm-hmm. especially now we got kids. It's like, I just dream up of that life. And uh, timer's on it. Timer's on, baby. So anyway, it's just it's it's a beautiful thing whenever you look at it that way. And I think um, my wife's been a great job at not like you know suppressing that for me. And even as bizarre as things sound, sometimes she's like, dude, she's never she goes, dude, you're full of yeah. BS, yeah. right? Like she's, she's like, like right, okay, I'm in. You've said it before and it happened. Yeah, dude, let's roll. God so. bless our wives, man. <laughs> they are beautiful. They are beautiful Amen. humans. Ugh. I honestly love that answer. So yeah. I'm fired up. Um, it sounds like to summarize that you're excited about growing and yeah. becoming more of the, the man you were created to be playing the game, dude. And playing the freaking game, play the game. That's amazing. Let's go, bro. I, I so enjoyed this, man. We got to have you back on. Where can people find you? Yeah, so at Flow Life, F L O L Y F E. That's literally my handle on everything. So cool. if you guys go to any social media and then flowlife.com, Love that's, it. Uh, that's where you guys can learn more. Super yeah. good, dude. Well, man, again, God bless you, bro. You're a stud, and thanks for jumping on the pod. Um, if you love this episode, please uh, share it with a friend or, or rate the podcast. Um, DM me, DM Colin. Um, if you were impacted by it, we'd love to hear from you. Um, with that being said, man, get and stay fit for life, physically, mentally, spiritually, get 1% better. All the taglines I usually say, but I love you truly. And I hope you uh, have a great day till next time. Let's go. Yeah, buddy, dude.